powerful new apps are coming to iPad as well. DaVinci Resolve for iPad for color correction, editing, and visual effects. Who saw that coming? Oh no, I didn't. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is the first glimpse of DaVinci Resolve running on an iPad. It's something that people have been asking for a while. I don't think I've seen any information about this from Blackmagic themselves, but it's seemingly been announced thanks to Apple. So yeah, I've got some thoughts, some opinions, and I've been doing a little bit of investigating. So let's jump right into it. Do we think it's gonna be the full version of DaVinci Resolve? In my view, it's gonna be a bit of a cut down version of DaVinci Resolve that still gets you like 90% of the stuff that you actually want and that you actually use within Resolve for most people most of the time. That was concise, wasn't it? You know what I mean? It's gonna be, a, it's gonna be most of it. It's gonna be a big chunk of what we use day to day, just in a bit of a cut down version, hopefully. If you look at the little tabs across the bottom, there's only two. We've got the cut page, which for those that don't know, is like a cut down Final Cut Pro-esque sort of version. And then we've got the color page, which is obviously for all of your color grading stuff. However, when they actually go to both of these pages, they are the full blown version. So we've got the full cut page. There doesn't really appear to be anything missing from here. And the same can be said on the color page. We've got our main preview window. We've got all of our color wheels. We've got our scopes. There's a little button to open up our nodes. We've got our effects. We've even got the little icon for magic masks within there. So again, it seems to be the full blown version of the color page. We've got less pages, but the pages are the full versions. Now, the fact that this iPad can run DaVinci Resolve actually does make sense because this M2 chip is the same chip they're putting into their Mac Ultras and their MacBooks and MacBook Airs and all that sort of stuff. So it's not really a surprise that it can actually run it. I think the key to all of this is the UI. The iPad, even though it's quite big for an iPad, it's I think it's a 12 inch screen, it's still pretty small and it's touch only. You can get little keyboards for them nowadays, but primarily it's a touch only device because it's a tablet. And I think that's going to be the biggest sticking point for Blackmagic converting DaVinci Resolve to the iPad rather than the actual capabilities of the hardware. If you take the cut page, for example, there's only one preview window. You've got the timelines at the bottom, media top left. It's relatively simple. The cut page was actually introduced a few years ago. And one of the key selling points of it was the fact that it was simpler and easier to use on smaller screens on things like laptops. Whereas the edit page and the fusion pages, they've both got two preview windows. They've got the inspector top right hand side. There's loads of stuff going on, which is probably much more difficult to convert to an iPad friendly format. So this is where my conclusion comes in. I think that's it. We are just going to get the cut page and the color page, at least initially, or it's just the fact that the cut page and the color pages are the only ones that are ready to be shown. It may even be that the edit page and the fusion pages actually look quite drastically different to their main workstation counterparts to get them to actually work on the iPad that they don't want to show them yet in case it's confusing and it looks a bit weird and people are like, whoa, that's not DaVinci Resolve, it's something completely different. One thing I would bet some money on though, we're not gonna get the media page and I highly doubt we're gonna get the deliver pages either. You don't need all the stuff that comes on the media page, however useful it can be. Most people just drag and drop. If you're on an iPad again, drag and drop your files in, media page doesn't make a huge amount of sense. And the same can be said for the deliver page. But I actually spotted something else. If we have a look at this shot here of the color page, you'll notice in the top right hand corner, there's an export button. And this isn't usually there. Rather than having to jump on the deliver page and mess around with a tiny UI that's just over the left hand side, doesn't make a huge amount of sense for an iPad, they're gonna have this consistent export button on all of the pages. You can just hit at any point, full screen pop-up comes in, you choose your codec, choose your format, time frame, all that sort of stuff, and off you go. In my head, that does make a whole lot more sense. Now, could it be your only version of DaVinci Resolve? Probably, maybe, I suppose we don't really know. Even if it is just the cut page and the color page, that's still a really powerful workflow. Import footage, cut it up, do some titles, transitions, whatever, hop onto the color page, do your color correction, add some visual effects, export it, and off you go. And even if it is just that functionality, it's still gonna be enough to attract current iPad users over to DaVinci Resolve because it's gonna be up there or if not the very best video editing package that's available for iPads. 
if this version does come with Edit and Fusion, then yeah, I mean, of course, it's the full version of DaVinci Resolve on an iPad, so it could be your only version. Of course, if you've got about a grand to spend and you're looking for an Apple device, you're probably better off going with something like a MacBook Air, similar price, same processor, you get the keyboard trackpad, way more ports, still pretty portable, that sort of thing. But there's another market for this, I think a more important market, because it's the one that I fit into, and that's those looking for a really awesome partner device to a main editing rig, whether you're on Windows or whether you're on Mac already. So if you didn't know, for about five quid or five bucks a month, you can host your DaVinci Resolve database up in the sky, in the clouds, with their cloud store, which basically means that all of your DaVinci Resolve projects, the actual project files themselves, are up in the cloud. It's not the media files, it's just the actual project file. Which means you start working at home on your main rig, you need to run out, so you just grab your iPad, run out as you go, and you can continue editing where you left off from that iPad, which is a really, really neat solution. All you need to do is to make sure that you've got the media files or proxies on both machines, or you could just use a little external SSD like I tend to use, and that's it, you're good to go. Which is why I don't think it's gonna matter too much to most people if there are some of the finer, really nerdy bits missing from this DaVinci Resolve for iPad. Now, all of that applies whether you're on Windows or whether you're already using a Mac, which is another really interesting point. Blackmagic, they don't really care which version you're using. If you buy a studio license, for example, which I have, you get two keys. I've got one key installed on my Windows PC, and I've got the other key installed on my MacBook Pro. I can already share files between them. I can export a project from my PC. I usually dump it on here, and I can just restore it on my MacBook, and I'm good to go. It doesn't care what version you're using, which means even those not already in the Apple ecosystem may want to pick up an iPad purely for DaVinci Resolve. And I actually fall into that category. I have a MacBook, I like it, it's great, but I like working on my PC as well. I don't like iPads, they're just big phones that can't make phone calls, but this actually makes me want to pick up an iPad Pro because it'd be really, really useful. Is it gonna be free? We don't know, but there's nothing to suggest this won't be a free app. DaVinci Resolve is free for everything else, so I don't see why it wouldn't be free for iPad. If they did charge a one-off fee for it, would anyone mind? I don't think so. Honestly, they've given away so much for free. If Blackmagic wanted to charge a one-off fee for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, I mean, I wouldn't kick up a fuss, would you? Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, there's one other thing which I haven't yet mentioned, which is another really interesting proposition, and that's the speed editor. If you don't know what the speed editor is, it's this thing here. Pretend I've got one. I have got one, but I've lent it to a friend, so it's not here, so you're just gonna have to pretend. It's a small little panel. It's about 300 quid. It connects via Bluetooth, so there's no cables to connect to your iPad or anything like that. And interestingly, it's designed specifically to work on the cut page. You grab your iPad, you grab your speed editor, throw them in your bag, and you've got this really nice little workstation. You've got a nice 12 inch screen with a dedicated panel specifically to do any cutting and editing on that cut page. So I think it's really interesting that this is coming out. I'm going to have to pick up an iPad Pro so I can have a play with it and do some videos on it, I think. Maybe I'll finally have a use for an iPad. But anyway, there you go. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See ya.